we continue with part five of the indictment, picking up on page 59. Act 127. On or about the 5th day of January 2021, Robert David Cheeley, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Travion C. Cudi, and Scott Graham Hall placed multiple telephone calls to each other and to other individuals involved in the conspiracy. They include the following. 1. At 11.32 a.m., Stephen Cliffgard Lee placed a telephone call to Travion C. Cudi. 2. At 2.14 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Travion C. Cudi, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 23, whose identity is known to the grand jury, participated in a four-way telephone call. 3. At 12.19 p.m., Scott Graham Hall placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. 4. At 12.34 p.m., Scott Graham Hall placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. 5. At 1.07 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Scott Graham Hall. 6. At 1.09 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Scott Graham Hall. 7. At 2.30 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Harrison William Prescott Floyd. 8. At 2.45 p.m., Harrison William Prescott Floyd placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. 9. At 3.59 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Scott Graham Hall. 10. At 4.42 p.m., Stephen Cliffgard Lee placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. 11. At 4.50 p.m., Stephen Cliffgard Lee placed a telephone call to Harrison William Prescott Floyd. 12. At 5.05 p.m., Stephen Cliffgard Lee placed a telephone call to Harrison William Prescott Floyd. 13. At 7.19 p.m., Travion C. Cudi placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. 14. At 7.48 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Travion C. Cudi. 15. At 8.27 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Travion C. Cudi. 16. At 8.49 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Stephen Cliffgard Lee. 17. At 9.18 p.m., Scott Graham Hall placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. 18. At 9.31 p.m., Travion C. Cudi placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. 19. At 10.14 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Stephen Cliffgard Lee. 20. At 11.16 p.m., Robert David Cheeley placed a telephone call to Travion C. Cudi. 21. At 11.25 p.m., Scott Graham Hall placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. 22. At 11.35 p.m., Robert David Cheeley, Travion C. Cudi, and Scott Graham Hall participated in a three-way telephone call. 23. At 12.09 a.m. on January 6, 2021, Travion C. Cudi placed a telephone call to Robert David Cheeley. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 128. On or about the fifth day of January 2021, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. The vice president has the power to reject fraudulently chosen electors. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 129. On or about the fifth day of January 2021, 
John Charles Eastman met with Chief of Staff to the Vice President Mark Short and counsel to the Vice President Greg Jacob for the purpose of requesting that Vice President Mike Pence reject slates of presidential electors from Georgia and certain other states during the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 130. On or about the 5th day of January 2021, Donald John Trump met with Vice President Mike Pence in the Oval Office at the White House. During the meeting, Donald John Trump stated that Pence had the power to decertify the November 3, 2020 presidential election results, that people cheated, and that Pence wanted to play by Marquess of Queensbury rules. When Pence stated that it was his duty to support and defend the Constitution and that only Congress had the power to decide to reject slates of presidential electors, Donald John Trump stated that Pence was naive, implied that he lacked courage, and stated that Pence was doing a great disservice. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 131 On or about the fifth day of January 2021, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Vice President Mike Pence. During the telephone call, Donald John Trump and John Charles Eastman attempted to persuade Pence to reject slates of presidential electors or return the states of presidential electors to state legislatures. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 132 On or about the fifth day of January 2021, Donald John Trump placed a second telephone call to Vice President Mike Pence. During the telephone call, Donald John Trump asked Pence if he had received a copy of a letter from a group of Pennsylvania legislators urging Congress to return the state's electoral college votes and stated to Pence, You gotta be tough tomorrow. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 133 on or about the 5th day of January 2021, Donald John Trump issued a statement through the Trump campaign that falsely stated, The vice president and I are in total agreement that the vice president has the power to act. Our vice president has several options under the U.S. Constitution. He can decertify the results or send them back to the states for change and certification. He can also decertify the illegal and corrupt results and send them to the House of Representatives for the one vote for one state tabulation. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 134. On or about the 6th day of January 2021, Kathleen Alston Latham placed a telephone call to Scott Graham Hall. Several hours later, Scott Graham Hall placed a telephone call to Kathleen Alston Latham. During at least one of the phone calls, they discussed Scott Graham Hall's request to assist with the unlawful breach of election equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 135 on or about the 6th day of January 2021, Donald John Trump appeared and spoke at a rally at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C. During the rally, Donald John Trump made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia and elsewhere, solicited Vice President Mike Pence to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states, and encouraged those in attendance at the rally to march to the United States Capitol. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 136 
On or about the 6th day of January 2021, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani appeared and spoke at a rally at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C. During the rally, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia and elsewhere, and solicited Vice President Mike Pence to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 137 On or about the 6th day of January 2021, John Charles Eastman appeared and spoke at a rally at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C. During the rally, John Charles Eastman made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election, and solicited Vice President Mike Pence to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 138. On or about the 6th day of January 2021, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. If Vice President at Mike Pence comes through for us, we will win the presidency. Many states want to decertify the mistake they made in certifying incorrect and even fraudulent numbers in a process not approved by their state legislatures which it must be. Mike can send it back. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 139. On or about the 6th day of January 2021, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. States want to correct their votes, which they now know were based on irregularities and fraud. Plus, corrupt process never received legislative approval. All Mike Pence has to do is send them back to the states and we win. Do it, Mike. This is a time for extreme courage. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 140 On or about the 6th day of January 2021, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Vice President Mike Pence and solicited him to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law, for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states. When Pence refused, Donald John Trump stated that Pence would go down as a wimp and that Pence was not protecting the United States. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 141. On or about the 6th day of January 2021, John Charles Eastman sent an email to counsel to the vice president, Greg Jacob, that stated, The Senate and House have both violated the Electoral Count Act this evening. They debated the Arizona objections for more than two hours. Violation of 3 U.S.C. 17. And the VP allowed further debate or statements by leadership after the question had been voted upon. Violation of 3 U.S.C. 17. And they had that debate upon motion approved by the VP, in violation of the requirement in 3 U.S.C. 15 that after the vote in the separate houses, they shall immediately again meet. So now that the precedent has been set that the Electoral Count Act is not quite so sacrosanct as was previously claimed, I implore you to consider one more relatively minor violation and adjourn for 10 days to allow the legislatures to finish their investigations, as well as to allow a full forensic audit of the massive amount of illegal activity that has occurred here. If none of that moves the needle, 
at least a good portion of the 75 million people who supported President Trump will have seen a process that allowed the illegality to be aired. John. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 142. On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Kathleen Alston Latham sent a text message to the Chief Operations Officer of Sullivan Strickler LLC with the address for the Douglas Municipal Airport in Coffee County, Georgia, to coordinate picking up Scott Graham Hall from the airport and driving him to the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office for the purpose of assisting with the unlawful breach of election equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16.14.35b and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 143. On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Scott Graham Hall and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 24, whose identity is known to the grand jury, flew from DeKalb Peachtree Airport in DeKalb County, Georgia, to Douglas Municipal Airport in Coffee County, Georgia, for the purpose of assisting with the unlawful breach of election equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614.35b and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 144. On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of interference with primaries and elections in violation of OCGA Section 21-2-566 in Coffee County, Georgia, by willfully and unlawfully tampering with electronic ballot markers and tabulating machines in Coffee County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 145 On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of unlawful possession of ballots in violation of OCGA Section 21-2-574 in Coffee County, Georgia, by causing certain members of the conspiracy, who were not officers charged by law with the care of ballots, and who were not persons entrusted by any such officer with the care of ballots for a purpose required by law, to possess official ballots outside of the polling place in Coffee County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 146. On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of computer theft in violation of OCGA Section 16993A in Coffee County, Georgia, by using a computer with knowledge that such use without authority and with the intention of taking and appropriating information, data, and software, the property of Dominion Voting Systems Corporation in Coffee County, Georgia. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614. 3-5-A-19, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 147. On or about the 7th day of January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of computer trespass in violation of OCGA Section 16993B, in Coffee County, Georgia, by using a computer with knowledge that such use was without authority 
and with the intention of removing voter data and Dominion Voting Systems Corporation data from said computer in Coffee County, Georgia. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614-35A-19 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 148 On or about the 7th day of January, 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of computer invasion of privacy in violation of OCGA Section 16993C in Coffee County, Georgia, by using a computer with the intention of examining personal voter data with knowledge that such examination was without authority. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614-35A-19 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 149 On and between the 6th day of December 2020 and the 7th day of January 2021, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense of conspiracy to defraud the state in violation of OCGA Section 161021 in Coffee County, Georgia, by unlawfully conspiring and agreeing to commit theft of voter data, property which was under the control of Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, a state officer, in his official capacity. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614.35b and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 150. On or about the 9th day of January 2021, the 10th day of January 2021, the 11th day of January 2021, and the 13th day of January 2021, an unindicted co-conspirator, Individual 25, whose identity is known to the grand jury, unlawfully accessed certain data copied from Dominion Voting Systems Equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, by downloading said data from a server maintained by Sullivan Strickler, LLC. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614.35b and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 151 on or about the 9th day of January 2021, the 10th day of January 2021, the 11th day of January 2021, the 18th day of January 2021, and the 19th day of January 2021, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 26, whose identity is unknown to the grand jury, unlawfully accessed certain data copied from Dominion Voting Systems Equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, by downloading said data from a server maintained by Sullivan Strickler, LLC. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614.35b and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 152. On or about the 10th day of January 2021, the 12th day of January 2021, the 13th day of January 2021, the 25th day of February 2021, and the 26th day of February 2021, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 27, whose identity is unknown to the grand jury, unlawfully accessed certain data copied from Dominion Voting Systems Equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, by downloading said data from a server maintained 
by Sullivan Strickler, LLC. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614.35b and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 153. On or about the 13th day of January 2021, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 28, whose identity is known to the grand jury, unlawfully accessed certain data copied from Dominion Voting Systems Equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, by downloading said data from a server maintained by Sullivan Strickler, LLC. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614.35b and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 154. On or about the 18th day of January 2021, Misty Hampton allowed unindicted co-conspirators Individual 25 and Individual 29, whose identities are known to the grand jury, to access non-public areas of the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, and facilitated their access to Dominion Voting Systems equipment. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 155. On or about the 22nd day of April 2021, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 28, whose identity is known to the grand jury, sent an email to the Chief Operations Officer of Sullivan Strickler, LLC, directing him to transmit all data copied from Dominion Voting Systems Equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 30, whose identity is known to the grand jury, an attorney associated with Sidney Catherine Powell, and the Trump campaign. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614.35b and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 156. On or about the 17th day of September 2021, Donald John Trump committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer in violation of OCGA sections 1647 and 1610 in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, a public officer, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public officer, OCGA Section 1610 by unlawfully decertifying the election or whatever the correct legal remedy is, and announce the true winner. In willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said person as prescribed by law, with intent that said person engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 157. On or about the 17th day of September 2021, Donald John Trump committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA Section 161020 in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making the following false statement and representation to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. 1. As stated to you previously, the number of false and or irregular votes is far greater than needed to change the Georgia election result. Said statement being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government, and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 
35A22 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 158. On or about the 25th day of April 2022, David James Schaefer committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA Section 161020 in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following statements and representations in the presence of Fulton County District Attorney's Office investigators. 1. That he attended and convened the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, but that he did not call each of the individual members and notify them of the meeting or make any of the other preparations necessary for the meeting. 2. That a court reporter was not present at the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, a department and agency of the government of a county of this state. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 161435A22 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 159. On or about the 7th day of May, 2022, Sidney Catherine Powell made at least one of the following false statements and representations in a sworn deposition with the United States House of Representatives Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. 1. That she didn't have any role in really setting up efforts to access voting machines in Coffee County, Georgia, or Antrim County, Michigan. 2. That she was aware there was an effort by some people to get access to voting machines in Georgia, but that she did not know what happened with that, and did not remember whether that was Rudy or other folks. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 160 On or about the first day of September 2022, Kathleen Alston Latham committed the felony offense of perjury in violation of OCGA Section 161070A in Houston County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements in a deposition in the matter of Curling v. Raffensperger, Case 117, CV 02989-AT, in the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia, a judicial proceeding, after having been administered a lawful oath. 1. That she was only present at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia, for just a few minutes on January 7, 2021. 2. That she only walked into the front part of the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office on January 7, 2021, and didn't go into the office. 3 that she had no idea if employees of Sullivan Strickler met Eric Cheney at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office on January 7, 2021. 4. That she did not see Misty Hampton at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office on January 7, 2021. 5 that her only interaction with Scott Hall at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office on January 7, 2021, was meeting him, speaking to him outside of the office, and then leaving the office. 6. That she did not see Scott Hall speak to anyone other than herself at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office on January 7, 2021. Said statements being material to the accused own involvement in the January 7, 2021 
unlawful breach of election equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office and to the accused's communications with others involved, the issues in question. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614.35a.25 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 161. On or about the 15th day of September 2022, Robert David Cheeley committed the felony offense of perjury in violation of OCGA Section 161070A in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements before the Fulton County Special Purpose Grand Jury, a judicial proceeding, after having been administered a lawful oath. 1. That he was unaware of the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, until after the meeting had already taken place. 2. That he had no substantive conversations with anyone concerning the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, until after the meeting had already taken place. 3. That he never suggested to anyone that the Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia should meet on December 14, 2020. 4 that the only communication he had with John Eastman concerning the November 3, 2020 presidential election was for the purpose of connecting Eastman to Georgia Senator Brandon Beach and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, for possible legal representation. 5. That he never worked to connect John Eastman with any Georgia legislators other than Georgia Senator Brandon Beach, and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury. Said statements being material to the accused own involvement in the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, and to the accused communications with others involved in the meeting, the issues in question. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 1614.35a.25, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. The acts set forth above were committed in furtherance of the conspiracy alleged above, and had the same and similar intents, results, accomplices, victims, and methods of commission, and otherwise were interrelated by distinguishing characteristics and were not isolated acts. We've come to the end of Part 5 of the indictment, as well as the end of Count 1. Next time, we will pick up where we left off on page 72 and Count 2 of the indictment. Until then, thanks for listening.